Hey everyone, welcome to the next weather video. It's going to be on the orographic effect and also severe weather. A little crash course on everything. Here we go. First of all, climate. That's what this is going to be mainly about. Uh, climate is the long-term weather pattern of an area, so you could see generally areas near the equator are going to be warmer, more moisture, and on the north and south pole you're going to get colder and uh, drier generally um, on land and moisture is going to be over water. So this is going to be over a very long period of time, maybe 10, 15, 100 years. Okay, the first thing I want to discuss is this thing called lake effect snow. So generally you get cold air and it's going to move over a body of warm water as you see in the picture. And as the cold air moves over the warm water, the warm water is actually going to cause the air to be able to carry more moisture because it's going to heat up the bottom of it. And then the moisture is going to be able to go into the cold air. So essentially the cold dry air picks up the moisture as it goes across the lake and then it drops a ton of snow on the other side because it had just picked up all the moisture from the lake. So here's a general idea of uh, where it happens in the United States. Here's New York. Here's Long Island right here. So these are the Great Lakes and essentially that CP air mass from Canada tends to come over the lake down here and drops the snow on the other side. Again, drop uh, CP comes over Lake Michigan, the dark blue drops the snow here. Look at Lake Erie, CP air comes down over Lake Erie, drops all snow here. Lake Ontario, CP air comes down, crosses Lake Ontario, drops tons of snow over here. So the reason you get the ton of snow is from the lake. That's why it's called lake effect snow. The air was originally dry and it moves over the water, picks up the moisture, drops it on the other side as it moves. Second thing is called the orographic effect. So a couple things to know about this. There's a giant mountain and it affects the climate. The area on this side, the left side in this picture, is called the windward side. And generally there's going to be the ocean or a body of water over here. And what happens is this mountain acts like a ramp. So the water, uh, the, the, the cooler air with the moisture sort of comes up the side of the ramp and it's forced to rise, expand, cool to the dew point and condense, rec DC. It's forced rec TC, so you generally have a clouds that form on this side of the mountain because that warm air rose up and all the clouds uh, formed over here. So this area of the mountain generally has trees and vegetation and it's cooler. And then on the opposite side of the mountain, the air actually sinks and compresses and warms. It ends up being dry over here, as you can see. So there's not a lot of uh, vegetation over here. So we could say compressing, warms and dries and sinks. So you can see it follows the mountain. And over on this side, it rises, expands, cools, and there's moisture and vegetation. It's always the same. The windward sides on the side where the wind is coming in from, and generally sometimes it will have water there to aid uh, the moisture process, but the windward side has the wind coming at it, and the leeward side is the opposite side of the mountain. The windward's always the, uh, has these characteristics, and the leeward always has these characteristics. Here's another uh, little picture for you. Again, the wind is coming from this way, so this is the windward side. It goes up the mountain like a ramp. This side's cooler with the clouds, and then this side compresses and warms, so you get all your dry side over here in your desert. So the moral of the story, mountains affect the climate. One side of the mountain has one character, some characteristics and the other side of the mountain has other characteristics. So you're going to have to remember which side has which. Windward is this side with these characteristics and leeward is this side with those characteristics. Monsoons. Monsoons generally happen in India is going to be your number one example. It's a season. So sometimes India can have a monsoon season or it can have a drought. Monsoons associated with tons of rain and a drought is associated with really, really dry. Another word for really dry, which actually we can go back here, that you might see is called arid. 
which would be like a leeward side of a mountain because it's dry. Those are synonymous, those words. So monsoons, how do they work? Well, if you look at India, it's got the Indian Ocean underneath it, right? So in the summer, this is like the way I like to remember monsoons. It's a giant version of a land breeze and sea breeze. So essentially what happens is in the summer, uh, actually, you know what? We're going to start with the winter. In the winter time, the uh, air is going from high pressure over here to low pressure over here, bringing this air downwards over the ocean. Therefore, India is not getting any of the ocean moisture coming up to them. This is going to give them a drought. On this side, you got the high pressure over the ocean and the low pressure over the land. So what ends up happening is all the wind brings all the moisture onto India, dumping tons of rain on top of India during this time. So the way you got to look at it is just look at the arrows. It's always the wind or the air is always going to go from high to low. So you could just label those immediately. If you see a picture like this, if the arrows are going towards India from the ocean, they're going to get rain because look, all the water is going onto them. On this one, all of, they're not getting rain because there's no water going on them. So all of it's going off India. So this is going to be dry. So that's how you got to interpret those pictures. Uh, here's just a couple pictures and another, like this is monsoon. So you could see all the, the arrows the uh, going from the water to the land and look at all the rainfall they're getting. So this Im impacts their climate drastically, as you can see by some of the pictures. Um, it also, uh, they actually depend on this also to grow certain crops and plants and have to plan accordingly for this. The next thing is this thing called El Nino and La Nina. It's a climatic event. And essentially all you gotta know about El Nino, La Nina is that it has to do with the uh, trade winds, which are the winds that go by the equator. So sometimes the trade winds are strong and sometimes they're weak. If they're stronger, they move the water, some warm water over by Australia, causing a lot of rain. And if they're weaker like this, that warm water doesn't make it over there, which causes them to have different climate. So it's literally, if the wind is stronger, it pushes the water. If it's not stronger, the water doesn't get pushed and the water is going to make the climate different. So sometimes it is different and sometimes it's not, and they call it El Nino and La Nina. They are climatic shifts to do with the wind. Another little picture of it. You could see a uh, strong current is going to bring clouds over here. And then if it's weaker, there is drought over there. So depending on the wind strength, you're gonna get different climatic situations in near Australia. Okay, now we're on to severe weather. There are a couple of different storms that we gotta know. The first one is a hurricane. A couple of facts about them. There's lots of rain and wind. Uh, this thing called storm surge, which is just like super flooding is where you're gonna get your most damage from these things besides the wind. It's a giant low pressure center. So these storms go counterclockwise and inwards. And their fuel is warm water. So generally they form around like Africa and the equator and they move towards the United States. So once they go on land and they're cut off from their water supply, they're going to die out. Um, here's a little map down here. So you could see generally they move up by the Florida. So it's generally like this. And then they'll make a turn and come to, towards New York. But this is always what they do by United States. And how to prepare for a hurricane. Um, the main thing is going to be uh, boarding up windows. So you board up your windows with like plywood or special shutters so that the wind doesn't affect you. Uh, have some type of evacuation plan maybe. If it's really bad, you might have to evacuate. Bring in furniture outside. Um, cut your trees if you think there's any big trees that can come down. Have your gas in your car. Have a generator, things like that. Next thing is a tornado, which is a giant windstorm. It doesn't last very long. Uh, normally they form over land and they're from a uh, MT air mass, which we talked about last video, and a CP air mass interacting towards the central United States over here, over the Great Plains. Uh, and you're gonna get these giant wind windstorms. Ways to uh, be safe during a tornado. Uh, number one way is to go into a basement. You wanna go into, Either if there's no basement, get into the center of the uh, the building, uh, lowest floor possible. 
Uh, that's pretty much it. Just go uh, maybe cover yourself with something heavy. Uh, get into a like a, a bathtub or like a, an archway of some sort, very stable area of the building. Um, pretty much the, the main thing. So go to the basement. And the last two storms are going to be a thunderstorm, which just, uh, you know, these are pretty common. Stay indoors. Don't go by power line or anything like that. And a blizzard. Uh, again, stay indoors. Have food and water ready to go. And, uh, you know, don't drive. That would be not a good idea. All right, let's do some questions and see how you do. So it says we got a windward and leeward side of a mountain. The arrows show the direction of air movement. Compared to the temperature and water vapor content at X, the temperature and water vapor content at Y are most likely what? Well, remember, windward's going to be cooler and wetter. So this is going to be hotter and dry. Remember, dry like arid. So leeward is going to be B, warmer and drier. Another windward leeward question. Cloud formation at location two is the result of air that does what? Clouds, rec DC, remember, rises, expands, cools to the dew point, and condenses. So we want cooling and expanding, A. Which location has the warmest and most arid climate? I hope you got this one right. D, we just did it. You're going to have arid, which is dry and warm, over on the leeward side. The side that leeward is the one without the wind. So since this side has the wind, this is the windward. Makes sense, right? Monsoon, summer monsoon rains normally occur in India when what? If you want rain to happen in India, you got to have the water come on to the, to the continent. Air moves from high to low. So there, we just figured it out. Number A says, high pressure exists near X. Nope. We have an L there. High pressure exists near X. Nope. Low pressure exists near X, yes, pulling moisture in from the Indian Ocean, yes. Answer C. Climate event that occurs when water in the eastern equatorial area of the Pacific Ocean becomes warmer than normal and may cause a warm, dry winter in New York. The answer is C in El Nino. It's a climatic event and occurs where the water in the equatorial uh, area is going to become warmer or drier, uh, sorry, warmer or colder because those trade winds are either increasing or decreasing. So it's going to pretty much slosh the warm water in different directions, causing the climate to shift. The striped areas show lake effect snow. These storms generally develop when what? Well, we said the CP air mass comes from Canada, goes over the lake, and then drops it on the opposite side. So we want the cold air to move east over the warmer lake water. That is good answer. Warm air is not going to bring snow, so that's bad. And warmer land is not going to bring snow either. Boarding up windows would be one emergency action most likely taken to prepare for which disaster? Boarding up windows is what you would do for a hurricane, B. And the last question, the hour is shown the most likely representation of the movement of what? This is a hurricane track. We said they all come from Africa and they move over here, D. All right, so there's your little summary of climate and severe weather. Uh, that wraps up the, end, uh, the weather unit completely. So I hope you enjoyed the videos, and we'll see you in the next unit. Bye-bye.